All right, this is the really cool part about the basket weave butcher block. And now the next step is to flip each piece one by one on its side. And you can see as I flip these over, there is no basket weave illusion quite yet. But as soon as I flip every one of these, every other one of these, the basket weave design reveals itself. And there it is. This is now a basket weave butcher block. Pretty cool. All right, that was a preview of where we're going to be within a few moments. So in this video, I'm going to describe sort of the, the process, the build process around building a basket weave butcher block. And like any project, it begins with a little bit of planning, a little bit of sourcing your materials. And what I'm doing is I'm building this basket weave butcher block out of maple and out of purple heart. So what I have right here is, is a maple slab and I'm determining how do I want to slice this up. I know I need a uh, two inch by inch and a half by 16 inch strips. I'm going to need six of these. I, and I came up with this measurement uh, in advance. So really it's just a matter of how do I slice up this uh, slab of maple in order to maximize how much usable wood I'm going to get out of it. So once I'm done making these freehand cuts, it's time to use my thickness planner to make these slabs perfectly flat on both sides. Now one of these slabs in particular had the bark running at an angle. So I actually decided to use my Rockler crosscut sled in order to cut the board at an angle. And that way that would maximize how much maple I can get out of this particular piece of wood. By the way, any tools that I reference here, you can find in the description. And then it's time to cut up the purple heart. Now the purple heart pieces I'm cutting up here are more than two inches wide. And the reason for that is because I wanted my purple heart pieces to be slightly larger than my maple pieces to begin with. I will eventually get them down to exactly two inches in a later step. Now these purple heart pieces are also an inch thick and I don't need them to be that thick. Uh, these are going to represent the little ribbons that are within the basket weave design. Uh, I was aiming for something like a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. So if you take your table saw and slice them right down the middle, then you get uh, something close to about three eighths of an inch. But that table saw blade leaves some uh, marks that are not perfectly flat. So what I also did was turn the cut side up and ran them through my thickness planer and just shave them off a little bit and that'll make sure that those purple heart boards are pretty flat. And then it's time to determine the, the final width of my maple boards. I know they need to be 16 inches long. I know they need to be two inches tall, but how wide do they need to, need to be? They need to be two inches minus the width of two pieces of purple heart boards. So these two pieces of purple heart are three quarters of an inch. Take that away from two inches and I'm left with an inch and a quarter. And I add a little bit extra for my final dimension here. And I ended up with one inch and five sixteenths um, for the width of those maple boards. And then I just use my thickness planer to get everything down to final dimensions. And here I'm confirming that the height of one of my maple boards, so it's two inches tall, is the same width as one of the other maple boards with both pieces of purple hearts uh, sandwiching it on either side. It's extremely important that these are square and this step will help ensure that they are square. And now we get up into, into group number one and all we're doing here is creating a, a few strips of maple that are sandwiched between two pieces of purple heart. Here it shows that I'm putting them all together but I'm not actually I'm not gluing them all together. I'm just for the sake of convenience gluing them all at the same time. So a piece of purple heart is glued next to a piece of maple which is glued next to a piece of purple heart. Then there's no glue, and then I repeat it over again, purple heart, maple, purple heart, and so on for all the strips. So after this first glue up, we will have a lot of these pieces that basically look like a sandwich, and we are approaching the, the next glue up already. In order to get ready for the next glue up, what we need to do is make sure all four of these sides are equal width. Um, currently, I know I, on purpose, got one of the sides too long. So here I've got, this is about 51, 52 millimeters uh, in width, whereas on this dimension, it's about 54 to 55 millimeters. So I need to make this piece thinner in this direction, which is great because that's where I've got my, my little lip here. And so by the end of this, I should have about 52 millimeters by 52 millimeters, maybe 51 on both sides, but I need them to be exactly the same length uh, in order to get ready for the next glue up step.
All right, I'm done with the second glue up, and uh, this is what's looking like so far. Actually, it looks pretty neat. This might be kind of a cool board uh, as is, but what I'm really looking for is the cross section. The cross section is the secret to the basket we pattern, and we need to create, we need to cut a few of these pieces and line up these cross sections in order to get that illusion and get that, that pattern to really reveal itself. So first things first, I've got some dry glue on the top here. I'm gonna run it through the planer. Uh, kind of get this all smoothed off, uh, get the other side smoothed off as well, because ultimately these are the sides that are going to be glued together once it's all cut up. And then I'm going to start cutting up some strips. Let's see how it looks. Okay, I'm almost done with this basket weave butcher block. The next step is to plane it down. Um, planing can be dangerous with a basket with a uh, end grain board. Um, ideally, I have something like a drum sander. I don't have a drum sander, so I'm, I'm going to plane this down with my thickness planer. Um, there are two things that co can go wrong. Um, with a, an end grain board, the grain of the board is, is running out from the board, which means that it's very easy for the, um, the blades of the planer to catch some edge and just rip the board entirely. So that can go wrong as the board is going through the planer itself. Uh, it could just essentially get stuck in the middle on one of the blades and explode. That's a bad situation. Um, the other thing that could go wrong is as those blades, those planer blades are spinning and running across the board, as those blades reach the end of the board, there's nothing supporting the grain at the very end of the board. The way I've mitigated that is in the previous step during the, the third glue up, I glued on two pieces of pine. These are just pieces of scrap. So you can see one piece right here and I have another piece right here. Um, and that'll provide some support for the grain at the very end of the board so that I don't get that kind of blowout. Um, and then to mitigate the, the first problem that I mentioned where the, the board can explode. The, re the way I'm going to mitigate that is by taking very, very shallow passes across the board about a 64th, a 64th of an inch at a time um, it's going to take a while, but I'd rather do 15 passes through the paint planer than take off too much and have this really beautiful board uh, explode on me. So that's the next step. Plane it down, then we're going to sand it, uh, take the router to it and, and round over the edges, and we're, we're pretty much done at that point.
check it out i'm done this is a maple and purple heart basket weave butcher block um yeah these are always really fun to make i really like the the reveal where i'm flipping those pieces over and it just it looks like sort of a, a weird geometric pattern and then suddenly you see the the basket weave illusion just pop out that's always a fun moment but i also like reflecting on you know this started out as you know a big chunk of purple heart started out as a big chunk of maple and just sizing it down cutting it down um, being careful to to measure carefully ultimately getting to a place where we can create this cross section and once we're able to create boards that produce this cross section then the rest of it is basically uh, getting to this point and in, in creating a finished product so overall i really like this project um, these sorts of boards go for hundred dollars two hundred dollars or more on etsy i am selling this board for free i'm not selling it at all i am donating donating this to a fundraiser it's going to a silent auction it's going to a better cause or the proceeds from it are going to a better cause so um yeah i made this for free and it's a donation uh and happy to be able to give back uh, to my community so, my name is charlie i'm with measure twice woodworking thanks for watching